Okay guys, I'm back out here going to try to finish this thing up today or at least get to the point where I've uh, got it running. Uh, in the last video we put the uh, Z-Box on and the uh, Z-axis lead screw so we've got that all set. Uh, it's ready to plug up and run. Uh, I just need to cut the X-axis lead screw and then also measure and cut the Y-axis lead screws and then within just a few minutes we'll have this thing uh, ready to fire up and when I get ready to fire it up I'm probably going to take a little extra time and go through the Mach 3 setup. Uh, I mentioned earlier I was going to uh, kind of treat this like it was a brand new setup to show people the, the Mach 3 steps because with mine I always set them up the same way so when I bring my computer out here it's not a big deal I just took it up and it's already pretty much set up ready to go but I know that other people when they're building one of these for the first time and, and doing Mach 3 for the first time, they need to know the settings. So I want to take a little extra time in this video. Uh, hopefully I won't make it too super long. I'll try to not ramble too much. Uh, and we'll uh, try to show the settings for the Mach 3. So that's what I'm going to be doing today. So let's get started. Okay, what I want to do first is I want to go ahead and get... Uh, you know, get all the lengths of my lead screws figured out and then I'll just cut them all at once. Like I said earlier, this one, this big long one here, this is still six foot. I had it in here uh, uh, a couple of videos ago and, you know, to set up the X axis. So I already measured and I know what I need to cut off of there. I know I need to cut about 14 and uh, 3 8 inches off of that one to. Uh, to make it come out right. <coughs> now my y-axis uh, lead screws, of course they're both going to be identical, I have to cut two of them, but here's the way that I measure that. Now I've got my uh, motor mount block here, I've just got it clamped, same as I have the, uh, the bearing support uh, block over here, I've just, you can see I just got a clamp on there holding it on. And what I've done is I went ahead and took a couple of screws and mounted the motor, went ahead and put the uh, coupling on the motor and pressed the coupling on so that when I look down in that little slot where, it, you know, where it's right in the middle of the coupling that I can just see a little bit of the shaft of the motor. That way I know that I'm using up half of the coupling for the motor and the other half will be for the lead screw. Uh, and you know, you've got enough room to play with. I don't know how long that thing is. It's about uh, about five eighths of an inch looks like. So even if you cut your lead screw a little bit short, you're still good because you're going to be able to reach everything. You don't want to get it, you know, you want to get it within at least probably an eighth of an inch or so. Uh, so the way I measure it is now that I've got this set up where it needs to be, I'll measure from the back of this block right here and that will make my lead screw come just somewhere on this back side here depending on how far off I am on my cut. It'll be a little bit short, possibly a little bit long, or probably uh, flush. So I just measure from the back of this block here and kind of eyeball it and line it up with uh, that slot in the middle of that coupling. And that dimension for these on my particular case is 48 and 5 eighths. So I'll write that down somewhere. I got a pen around here somewhere. Uh, so I need to cut two of them, 48 and 5 eighths. Uh, and this may vary because when you, you know, if you get the, the plans, depending on how you're building this thing, uh, you know, the plans were designed uh, around using a half sheet of plywood or a 48 by 48 as the table. Well, I wanted to go a little wider than that. I've got my table 56 but I did leave it 48 this way. So if you're leaving your table 48 this way, your lead screw over here should be somewhere around 48 and 5 eighths. But don't trust me, always measure your own after you're ready. And like I said, the lead screws and the, the stepper motors, the step that I'm doing today, that's pretty much the last step you do before you're ready to fire the thing up. So, so I've got to cut two lead screws 48 and 5 eighths. I've got to cut 14 and 3 eighths inches off of this one and I'm going to do that off camera instead of making a bunch of noise and when I get that done I'll come back on and we'll be ready to uh, connect the stepper motors. 
Okay, I've got the three lead screws cut. Um, I know there's probably going to be somebody saying, well, I wish you'd have shown how you cut them. Uh, I've, got, I've done another video before showing uh, how I cut them and file them and all that. I think it's in the, probably on the Garage Work CNC website, or of course you can look it up at the Garage Work CNC YouTube page. Uh, I think that's where it's at. Uh, but anyway, I basically just use this uh, right angle grinder with a uh, metal cutting disc in it. Uh, if you use one of these, don't don't buy the dollar store Harbor Freight disc. Get a decent disc because some of those will come apart on you. And you should wear a face shield too while you're using this. Uh, or at the very least, safety glasses. But probably should wear a face shield uh, in case this thing, these things come apart. Uh, like I said, once I get them cut, I use my flat file just to kind of get the, the big burrs off and then I use this little uh, triangular looking file to get in between the threads there and clean that up. And then I have, since I build a lot of these things, I have a spare uh, coupling that I use just for the purpose of making sure that that will go on without any... Uh, you know, without any effort really. If you go to put this on and it, you know, it doesn't feel like it's going to go on, don't force it on there because this is sharp steel where you just cut it and these are Delrin threads so you're probably going to screw them up. Uh, you know, try it. If it doesn't go on there, stop, file a little bit more. Uh, it, like I said, it, it just practically falls on there as you can see. So make sure you check that before you, uh, go any farther after cutting these. So I guess I'm ready to put these in. Uh, I don't know how exciting that part's going to be, but uh, I'll try to film some of that as well. Okay guys, the next thing I do after uh, I've got the lead screws cut is I, you see that I've removed the uh, stepper motor that I had here that I was using to get my measurement from. And basically what I do is I give a few minutes for the uh, lead screws to cool down uh, where you cut them, which I forgot to mention a while ago. When you're using one of those uh, things to cut it, if, if a little piece falls off on the floor or something, don't reach down and pick it up because if you do, you'll uh, let go of it in a hurry. It's going to be good and hot. So anyway, so I let these cool off a little bit, get them filed good. Get, now I go ahead and put the couplings on there, get the couplings all snugged up on all of the uh, lead screws. Of course, we've got the, the Z done. And now I'm ready to, and I'm just going to start with this one on this side. I'm going to go ahead and start screwing this one through the Acme nut. You'll see the, uh, there went the little uh, round plug. Now like I said, this should go through here, you know, you should be able to turn this by hand. So. About having these uh, supports, the bearing support, this motor mount here just kind of clamped on. I haven't screwed them on here yet. I can see where I need to go. So, in other words, I, I, I don't want to get this thing too close to that because I want it to be back far enough away from it. So, I can tell that I'm going to have to move this a little bit. So I can go ahead and run this far enough up so that now I've got it, it's kind of almost flush with the back here. So I'll just kind of clamp this back up just to see. And then I can see that this mount needs to come out. So I'll just kind of keep it snugged up here a little bit. I can actually uh, take the motor. Let me get a couple of screws here. And then, of course, you want to determine which way you want your uh, wire, since the Y-axis motors you know, don't really move, they're kind of stationary. I usually leave them uh, pointing down. So 
So I want to make sure that I've got the uh, little nut, uh, little set screws here. I want to make sure that I've got those loosened back up. When I take when I take the motor off, I always snug them back up just so they won't fall out because they're so small. You, they hit the floor and go rolling, you'll never find them. All right, so I'm going to take this motor and push it on there, and then I can just put a couple of screws in here diagonally to hold the motor in place. And actually, these screws are way too long. I'm going to go around to the shop in a little bit and get some that are shorter and replace them. But these will work for you. If I can hang on to them. There we go. Okay, so now just, just eyeballing this one and another thing you can do too is, uh, let me grab my measuring tape here right quick. Another thing you can do too is kind of measure and see it looks like the center line of that lead screw is about two and a half inches. So if I hold this one, it looks like that one's right, but this one is way off. So this thing needs to come out some more. Tighten back up a little bit just to hold it. Yeah, I've still still got to come a good way to here with this one. Okay, so there it looks like it's lined up, but I'm not ready to uh, screw these in yet. I'm going to leave them just clamped. I just want to tighten the clamps to make sure it won't move. And then once I get all the other lead screws on, I'll go ahead and hook up the stepper motors and actually fire this thing up and run it before I ever screw all this together. Uh, because once you run this frontwards and backwards a little bit, that's how you can tell if you've got a bind. So even though you're measuring this and it looks like we've got it pretty well straight in line here the way it should be, uh, we want to make sure we uh, run that back and forth and make sure it's running smooth on both sides before we ever stop and uh, screw those in. So let me go ahead and put the other side on and the X and we'll uh, turn the camera back on when I'm ready to fire up the motor. Okay guys, i got to spun back around here. I've got all the lead screws put in. One thing I did want to talk about uh, is when you're putting your lead screws in, as I mentioned a while ago, I take the coupling and put it on the, uh, on the lead screw, then run it through here, and then I you know, loosen those little set screws back up on the coupling, slide the motor in, and then you're going to bolt the motor to the mount but don't forget to tighten up those little set screws back on the coupling. Otherwise, when you get to this step and you get ready to fire it up, you'll go, wait a minute, what's wrong? It's not moving. And what it is is the motor's turning, but it's, it's just spinning because it's not tightened up on that coupling. So make sure you don't forget to do that. Um, again, I'm going to apologize. This is going to be kind of a long video. I was checking the, I think I was already up to like 13, 14 minutes or something. But I figure if you've made it this far, you probably got to watch the last few minutes here because uh, this is the part that, uh, you know, as many of these things as I build, I never get tired of. This is when you start it up for the first time, uh, get all your, uh, all the mock free settings correct and all. It's just, uh, that's, it's always to me a, a sense of accomplishment when you, uh, and, and I might say any of these people that are uh, you know, building these things, uh, you know, give yourself a pat on the back when you reach this point because you've gone from this to this. So, um, 
you know, it's uh, it's it's not hard, but uh, you know, you, you've done a good job if you've made it to this point. So uh, we're going to fire this thing up first. I'm going to go through and uh, we're going to connect the stepper motors. I've got the controller turned off. Uh, anybody that's oh, this is just an extra cable. That I bought. We're going to come back here to the back. And the Xylotex boxes are made where the yellow, and all these are color-coded, folks. I've, I've talked about this probably a million times. This is the, and I know you can't see that from way back there, but this has got like a little yellow uh, shrink wrap stuff on it. I don't know what you call that stuff. Uh, so the yellow needs to go to one of these back two. Really doesn't make any difference which one, but whichever one you stick it to, uh, connect it to, that's going to be the y-axis. So that one's connected there. Uh, the next one over here, uh, as I've said many times, we slave the a-axis to the y-axis and those motors move in sync. So the blue one is the y-axis. So I'm going to connect that one over here to the right side here. And again, like I said, it really doesn't matter whether you do it. Uh, blue could be over there, and yellow could be over here, vice versa. It doesn't matter. Either way. As long as they're, they're on these two back ones. Okay, this next one, uh, let's see what we've got here. Green is going to be the Z, so I'm going to have to walk around there to connect that one, it looks like, because I'm too short. Uh, and red is going to be the X, which will go over here. And I'm probably going to use, I bought an extension cable right here. Uh, Jeff and Xylotex sells these in six foot lengths, and I probably should have bought two of them. But uh, I need to order a couple more anyway. But this is an extra six foot length, so I'm going to attach this to the x axis, and then it will also go here to the red. And since I've got extra length, I can run it down here to make sure it stays out of the way. Okay. Now these Molex connectors, they only go one way, but I always look to make sure that the, the red and red and all that's lined up, because if you happen to force it in the wrong way, it, uh, it's going to make for a bad day when you turn it on. So, okay, now let me see if I can get this, uh, this green is going to be the Z. So we've got that connected. I'm going to try to get it where it stays out of the way and doesn't get run over. You'll notice I've got my UC100. I'm using this with just a laptop. I don't have a very long uh, parallel cable. I've only got a 3-footer. I'll have to get a longer one. I was going to steal a 15-footer off of there, but I thought, well, I'll just go ahead and use this because I can just leave it on the table. So I've got my UC100 attached and now we're ready to turn this on. So before I do that I'll bring the camera in. I try to get it real close and hopefully you can see the computer screen. I don't know how good that's going to work but uh, we'll try it and see if you can, uh, can see the screen good enough to, as I go through the settings. <laughs> 